For the following exercises, evaluate the algebraic expressions. So for the first one, if f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 5, we want to evaluate f of 2 plus i. Okay, so complex numbers, imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are numbers that are not real. So there are real numbers, actual values. So 3, 5, 2, negative 2, negative 5. If a number is not real and it is imaginary, we denote that by i's. So i is an imaginary number. However, when dealing with imaginary numbers, the math that you would do with real numbers is exactly the same. So addition, multiplication, subtraction, you know, distributing. The math is all the same. We're, we're now just dealing with little eye guys. They're cute. So let's dive right in. So they give us a function f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 5. And we need to evaluate f of 2 plus i. Now remember, for whatever they say in the, fir in the beginning function, they said that for all x's, we're going to put in for these x's here. But now that things have changed, we're going to eliminate all of the x's and instead put a 2 plus i. That's it. So right now we're just channeling those x's and we're substituting them. So it originally in the function it was x squared, but now all the x's have to be this, 2 plus i. So it would be 2 plus i squared plus 3 times, not x anymore, all the x's are now this bad boy, so 2 plus i, and then plus 5. Do you see how we just, for all the x's, we just substituted? That's it. Now comes the fun part, simplifying probably like what <laughs> this is this is the fun part because it's you know it's like a puzzle so the first thing is is we just have to simplify right now this looks like a whole a whole bunch of jazz over here right two plus i all squared so first let's just uncover this right what is two plus i squared well this or anything squared, is saying that you have two of the same thing being multiplied by each other. So in this case, I actually have 2 plus i times 2 plus i. Hmm, okay. So now let's try to simplify this. This kind of goes back to, uh, sometimes they call it the FOIL method. I know when I was in school, um... They called it the FOIL method, but a lot of students these days, they don't say that they've ever heard of FOIL. So just let me know in the comments if they still use this concept called FOILing. I like to call it the let's be fair concept. When you're multiplying two parentheses, you have to distribute. You have to distribute all the values of the first one into the second one. Now, this is why it's being fair, because... I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it by the first value. But you got to be fair. You also have to multiply that number by the second one. Everybody wants in on the action. And then I've exhausted all possibilities. Now I go to the next letter. I know I have to multiply the i by the first term, which is the 2, but I got to be fair. Everybody wants in on that action. So I need to also multiply the i and the i. So let's give it a go. So I'll color code this. 2 times 2 is 4. So that takes care of the first one. But now we got to be fair. 2 times i is a 2i. So this would be plus 2i. Now comes the red guys. I 
times 2 is a 2i, and it's positive, so plus 2i. And then i times i is an i squared. Let's clean it up. Oop, there should be a squared here. Let's clean this up. These are like uh, variables, I guess. They both just have one i. So I can say that this equals 4 plus 4i four plus i squared. Now, when we're evaluating and when we're simplifying, our answer can only have one i. I cannot have an i squared. I can't have an i cubed or an i to the fourth or fifth or whatever. So I have to know how to get rid of this i squared. It turns out that when you actually multiply two i's together, which is the same thing as i squared, that actually turns out to be a real number. It is a negative 1. So this whole thing right here is just a negative 1. So now I have 4 plus 4i four minus 1, or plus a negative 1. It's the same thing. Now I can simplify even more. I have a 4 in the front and a negative 1 in the back, so this turns into 3 plus 4i. And that's the simplified part for this. And just know that um, in general terms, you need to have your real number in the front and your i value in the back. If you said 4i plus 3, technically that's incorrect. The real numbers come first, and then the i values come last. Okay, so we have this. This is the simplified version of the first part. Now let's work on the second part. So I'm just going to put that over here. 3 times 2 plus i. This is also playing fair or distributing, right? I have a 3 in the front. I need to multiply it by the 2, but I got to be fair. I also need to multiply it by that i. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times i is plus 3i. So that was easy. I can't simplify any more. So that's the second piece of the puzzle. And then I just have a plus 5 at the end. So let's put all of these together. So f of 2 plus i would be... The first part, which we simplified all the way down to 3 plus 4i. Then comes the second part. And you know what? Let's color code this so that the colors match. This would be 3 plus 4i. Then comes the 6 plus 3i. And then comes that remaining plus 5. Now let's just simplify even more. I think we got this, guys, right? Let's group all the like terms together. 3 plus 6 plus 5, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have a 14, and now group all the i's together. 4i plus 3i is a 7i. Now, can you leave it as this? Sure, why not? You could also simplify maybe a little bit more because... A 14 and a 7 both have a common number of 7. So could I have just pulled that out? Sure. I could say 7, parenthesis, 7 times 2 will get me 14, so 2 plus i. Both answers technically are acceptable. It, I guess it just depends on how... How far does your teacher or professor want you to simplify? But both of them are, you know, equivalent. Now, let's do the same thing for the second one. If f of x equals 2x squared plus x minus 3, bleh, minus 3, we want to evaluate for f of 2 minus 3i. Okay, so we know what to do. They give us that initial function. And now they want us to substitute all of the f's. Ooh, why did I put a 2 there? <laughs> they want us to substitute all of the x values for 2 minus 3i. So I got two x values. I need to substitute it there, and I need to substitute it here. So this would equal 2 times, maybe I'll put it in red, 
2 minus 3i, and that's all squared because that has to stay, plus 2 minus 3i, and then minus 3. If you wanted to put parentheses around here, that's totally fine, but technically you don't need it because it's all addition and subtraction. Okay, so let's clean it up, guys. What's the first thing? This looks like a hot mess, right? This is, this is disgusting. <laughs> so we have to simplify that. Let's see. 2 minus 3i squared is the same thing as saying that I have 2 minus 3i's twice. They're being multiplied by each other. So here we go. We got to be fair, right? We have to take this 2 and multiply it by the 2, but everybody wants in on the action. So we need to multiply it also by that negative 3i. Then we got to do the same thing for the second term. This 3i wants to be multiplied with the 2, but you got to be fair. It's got to be multiplied by the 3i as well. So let's get down to it. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times a negative 3i is a negative 6i. Negative 3i times 2 is a negative 6i. And then negative 3i times a negative 3i is a positive 9i squared. Let's clean it up. Looks like I have a negative 6i and a negative 6i that are similar, so I can group those together. This would be 4 minus 12i plus 9i squared. And keep in mind that we hate i squares, right? We can easily just get rid of them because we know that i squared always just equals a negative 1. So if this is a negative 1, negative 1, I can say that this part is 4 minus 12i plus 9 times a negative 1. And then a 9 times a negative 1 is just a negative 9. Clean this up even more. I have a 4 in the front and a negative 9 in the back. So I have a negative 5 minus 12i. That's just this part right here. We just did this part. But what's going on with it? A 2 is being multiplied by this whole thing. So, there is a 2 times the whole answer. So, let's get it done. 2 times a negative 5, we got to play fair. The negative 12i wants in on the action as well. So, 2 times a negative 5 is a negative 10. 2 times a negative 12i is a negative 24i. And I can't really do anything more with that. So that's going to be the end of this section. But now we just have to throw it with all of this other stuff. So I'm going to erase a couple of things. So pause the video if you want to write this down. Ooh, write this down. But I'm going to just erase this part just so that we have more room. Okay. How is everyone's day going? Let me know how you're doing in your classes. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments what's, what's up. Okay, so that's good enough. Okay, so this whole thing, and maybe I'll just put it over here. So this whole thing now, the 2 times the parenthesis 2 minus 3i squared, that was this. Right? That's simplified to that. And now all we have to do is just add the rest. Plus 2 minus 3i minus 3. So we now have f of 2 minus 3i is, let's see, I have a negative 10, a plus 2, and a minus 3. Negative 10 plus 2 is a negative 8. Negative 8 minus 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, looks like it's a negative 11. 24i, negative 24i, minus 3i would be a negative 27i. Yeah. And k 
Can we simplify this anymore? Absolutely not. This would be your final answer. All right, guys. I'm so proud of you. We did it. What did you think? Let me know in the comments if this was easy to understand or if this made you, you know, understand your homework better. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys, all right? Um, I'll see you guys in the next video or the next lesson. And if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button or the like button. And tell your friends, tell your classmates. We really love helping you guys. And I will see you all in the next lesson. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.